Hey guys, today I'm going to show you five useful tips you should know within Blender part three. So let's get straight into it. First I want to talk about insetting. Insetting is a useful tool where you can click a face and press I on your keyboard and it'll inset a copy of that shape within itself. However, what if you wanted the exact same copy on the outside? Well, you can do that too. If you press I on your keyboard and then press O, you can turn on the outset option and then you can do the same shape on the outside. You can see along the top menu here, it says outset on boundary on individual off. So what else can we do? So say we extruded these up and we wanted to inset these sides. Obviously we've still got outset on, so we'll turn outset off and then it go to this kind of format. However, if you press I on your keyboard again, it'll change to individual insets. You can toggle individual on and off. So you can create some really unique shapes just through the inset tool alone. Next, I want to talk about moving objects. As you all may know, to move an object, you press G on your keyboard. However, if you're trying to line these up with the floor, it could get a bit tricky, especially if your origin point is in the center of your object. However, you can press G and then B, and you can select a vertice to be the point that you move from. I select this bottom corner and now, I can snap it straight to the bottom where I want it to be and it will line up perfectly. Really useful if you want to like, you have multiple objects and you want to snap this corner to this corner and it just, just perfectly sits there. Press G and then press B. We'll snap this corner and then I'm going to click this one. And it is all perfectly lined up. Really useful move tool. Next tip I want to look at is using the knife tool in edit mode. Say for instance you have a foliage map like I just was just making uh, this kind of long leaf type design. You can go into edit mode, press K on your keyboard and you can start cutting out in very unique shapes. Let's say we wanted to cut this out as close as possible to the shape of the leaf and we can do that. And we can just press P on our keyboard, separate from the selection and then we have this leaf on its own. And if we join up the vertices, we can then create extra loops and then maneuver this and make a unique plant from this alpha. Rather than having to do loop cuts and try and line up these, I mean, you could do it to begin with to get it exactly where you need it to be. But if we just did this and that was our shape, it's going to have a lot of excess waste uh, that has to be taken control by the alpha and that will really reduce the performance within your game. Getting it, cutting it close as you can while limiting the amount of vertices is a much better way of doing it and the knife tool is really useful for doing those sort of things. Next I want to show you about adding a track 2 constraint to your objects. So say for example you wanted to add a camera and you press Control Alt and Zero, kind of set it up how you want it. But then you wanted to move it, say, over here. But now, obviously, when you go into view of the camera, it's not even remotely close. You're gonna to have to rotate it again and point it towards your target, whatever. Let's say you wanted a camera for this angle. An easy way of doing it is to go into your constraints tab, add a constraint, track to, and then choose your object. Now, if we press zero on a keyboard, see. It will lock in on your object and no matter where we move the, the camera it will follow that object. It will always have it in its viewport. Bear in mind it goes off of the origin point of your object. If you're not happy with the origin point of your object, say I've got this um, owl sculpt that quickly knocked up, then you could just add in a empty and put it wherever you want it and have it track to the empty instead. So then uh, and you don't have to worry about the origin point of your object, you can just worry about the object origin point of the empty. The same constraints can be attached to lights. So say we have these area lights going on, which point directly. If you move this over here, it's not going to be pointing in the right direction, but we wanted to replace it. In this case, we can just attach the track to and we can maneuver the lights however we want and it will always point at our target. The last tip I want to give you today is a quick one about using a scale cage instead of scale. Usually you would click on an object and press S to scale 
and it would just shrink in along the origin point. You can obviously scale to where your 3D cursor is, example. A different way, however, we can click and hold on scale on the left hand side and click scale cage. Now we have this cage going around your object, and we say we can click resize from the top up right. We could bring it down this way, and I'll still say the base will still stay on the floor where it was. Or if you wanted it against the top, you can go top left, bottom left, and it'll scale up to the top right. It'll do the opposite of where you're scaling from, these points to point. We'll go point to point. Yes, it'll scale in a weird, weird way sometimes, like this. But it's very useful for these corner points um, of having a cage around your mesh to scale from instead of just scaling from the origin point. And that's it guys. I hope those tips were useful to you in some way. And if you liked the video, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. It really makes a difference. If there's anything you want to know in particular, please leave a comment and I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.